Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. So over the years, we've talked about a whole host of topics and we've seen some of the most aggressive, hateful, and ignorant opinions you will ever see. But there's one form of conversation that always sticks out to me the most. This meme will forever be relevant to any Twitter discourse involving Japan, its people, its culture, and anyone interested in all the above. So in a environment on Twitter where racism is found everywhere, everything is racist, everything is horrible, it's very strange to see that racism directed at Japan and its people and its culture is not only overlooked, but it's actually celebrated. And today I wanted to look at some threads that showcase that level of ignorance towards these things. And I think it's very worthy of a discussion today. So I want to start off with this TikTok that was shared with me. Um, I have to mute the first couple of seconds because there's copyrighted music. But basically, this 35-year-old otaku, weeb, nerd, geek, and gamer makes it to Japan. And this user has something to say about that. Suicide rate, bad working conditions, horrible mental health care system, racism, sexism, homophobia, perversion, pedophilia, like a lot of pedophilia. It's like the most normalized thing in Japanese media. So you get the point. Basically, this user is uh, disparaging and demonizing an entire race of people to own the anime fans. So talk about throwing stones in a glass house. This user is listing all these grievances about Japan. And I don't know where this user is from, but I guarantee you everything they just said could be applied to their home country as well because every single thing just listed there exists in varying forms in every country in the world and it always baffles me how japan is always singled out as the worst place in the world just because some weeaboos maybe in like those weeaboo cringe compilations from 20 years ago on youtube would say that some uh japan some utopia just because they say that doesn't mean that it's still not a nice country and has good things. And it's not defined by all of these negatives that you can find in every other country around the world. You know, to me, this person, let, let, let's go back. Where at any point does this person claim that anime is like the defining fixture of Japan? Nowhere. And to me, this is like someone who is a non-American who is very into Disney culture, right? And they want to go to the main source. So they go to Disney World in Orlando, Florida. And they're excited and happy to be there. And they film themselves. And all of a sudden, some TikTok user comes on and says, um, Actually, America is a really bad place for X, Y, and Z. Like, okay. I think anyone in that theoretical situation would not equate what's going on at Disney World to the values of American culture just the same way, even some otaku weeb wouldn't think that anime is the only defining fixture of Japan. Like, that's absolutely a crazy thing to see. It's a, it's a straw man argument made all the time. I very rarely, like, do you actually see people who claim that Japan is some, like, utopia? Especially, like, an anime and weeb utopia? You never actually see it. But I thought that was a good starting point. We're now going to go to this user right here who has, who has had a lot to say about uh, not only Japan, but anime and VTubers over the past few days. They have been on a warpath to speak on behalf of Japanese people. Now, about this user, this is all stuff from their bio. It's not like um, either A, making this up or digging into things they don't want to be known publicly. This person is part Japanese and they were raised in America in Detroit, of all places, and eventually they moved to Japan and became a kimono stylist, and now they are attempting to speak on behalf of everyone in Japan because apparently living there for a few years makes you an authority, which is something that they will accuse others of, of course, but let's read this first thread. So this was posted roughly three days ago saying, Getting very tired of people saying that Lolly slash Shotokan is normal here in Japan and isn't seen as weird. Stop treating Japan like it's a place where every anime sub niche 
is accepted and enjoyed by most people here in Japan when most people do not take anime so seriously. Fun fact for you people who love to speak about Japan like you're an authority when you don't live here and you're not Japanese. Ironic. 70% of Japanese people don't consume anime on a regular basis, nor do they give an S. The anime that do make it into average Japanese lives are huge. So as the eternal optimist that I am, this person's definitely seeing a glass half full right here. I'm seeing glass half empty because if you're going to say 70% of people don't consume anime on a regular basis in Japan, I see it as 30% of an entire country's population regularly, regularly consumes this medium. That is a huge number for a country with over 100 million people. That's like 30 to 40 million people from one country regularly consuming anime. That is is a massive number. Imagine like 30% of Americans regularly consuming cartoons. That tells me it's a pretty important part of their society. It doesn't mean it's important to the everyday lives of Japanese people. It doesn't mean every billboard is going to have an anime character on it, but clearly it's pretty important to the culture as a whole. It's it, It's got a spot, right? It doesn't make it its defining feature, but acting so flippant about 30% of the population regularly consuming a particular medium is not evidence that no one cares. It's, in fact, the exact opposite. But going off of this top part right here, we'll focus on this for a second, that people are trying to say that Lolly and Shotokan is normal in Japan. Nobody's saying that. Nobody with a brain is saying that. And if there are people saying that, they're wrong. I, I would agree with that. Lolly and Shotokan is not normal. And nobody should try to, like, normalize it what people want to make normal and normalize is not calling people pedophiles over their interest in fictional body types body types that are exclusive to fiction and just mean petite short what have you that's what people are trying to normalize you know people minding their own business consuming that type of content don't want to be labeled and attacked by outsiders calling them pedos over this stuff that's what people are trying to not have happen anymore at the end of the day, these are fetishes. Nobody just openly talks about fetishes. Nobody wants to normalize this sort of thing. That's very weird. And, you know, I, I want to focus on these words in particular because, as we all know, they have been hijacked by particularly English-speaking Twitter users, and their definitions have been completely misrepresented. And that brings me to the next part of this video, a wonderful story in three parts. I love a quick little story like this through screenshots. We're beginning with this user right here. So about four months ago, they shared this screenshot, of course. It's pretty famous on Twitter. It's the easiest way to get likes. It shows that Lollicon translates under Google Translate to pedo. So despite Japanese-speaking users proving this to be misinformation, uh, posting this will get you an easy couple thousand likes because people love to accept anything that is attacking anime, Japan, weebs, what have you. It's the easiest way to get likes. No one actually fact checks anything. They just accept it because it fits their narrative. Much like this one with 21,000 likes. Now, normally I knew that this was a mistranslation, right? It's very, it's been proven over and over again. But I thought the origin of this screenshot was actually just your run-of-the-mill uh, Photoshop, right? But actually, I saw a user explaining this, and it makes a lot more sense. So when you type these terms into Google Translate, you get the proper translation for this word, right? But what happens is there is a feedback function on Google Translate that gives user feedback as to some suggestions and further context of what that word or translation actually means. This is what people screenshot as evidence that it translates to pedo. This is feedback. This is the words of random users with no actual testing or accuracy. It's just what users are reporting. And that's what people are using as evidence without using this top part, leaving that conveniently out, 
and then using this screenshot as their proof that this translation literally means pedo when it doesn't. Here, I will do you a solid. I'm on the English to Japanese translation function right here. I will type it in live. You can hear my keyboard clacking. What do you got? It's not Lollicon. And down here you have, once again, the feedback. But this is not the translation. This is just feedback from users. So I bring that up for two reasons. Number one, to show that you can easily disprove that as misinformation. But that same user who shared it posted this tweet yesterday saying, middle school is crazy, posting a screenshot of an article where a lunch lady was arrest arrested after R-wording her middle school student for months on end. Now, I point this out with every kind of article like this. Whenever there is a male victim of these things, they conveniently use the word sex, which is absolutely disgusting. That implies some level of consent, which obviously a child cannot consent to. This child was R-worded, okay? That's all there is to it. A middle school student, a middle school student, and users like this who are pointing and laughing at Lollicon as evidence of pedo are making light of this. They're making light of a real life child being hurt. And you have users down here saying, don't blame him, don't blame him for doing that. And of course, these kinds of replies are liked by the original person who posted all these things. Yeah, so let me get this straight. Let me just make sure I'm following here. Uh, people who have an interest in fictional body types, bad, yucky pedos. But you celebrating a middle school boy being R-worded is cool to you, I guess, and he wanted it. Yeah, these are the people that we're dealing with in these situations, and it's it's hardly surprising people get caught in 4K like this all the time. It's always projection, by the way. But we're returning to our main protagonist over here, uh, another thread this time about VTubers. This was one day after our previous one. She posted, I wanted to stay out of this, but since it's a needed conversation, a needed conversation, then here we go. The anime avatar in and of itself isn't a problem. It's when Western VTubers pick Japanese names and use what they think are kawaii Japanese voices slash mannerisms in an effort to appear Japanese. That's why it's considered a form of digital yellow face. These interpretations of what Japanese people, especially younger Japanese women, are usually based in hyper-exaggerated ways of talking and speaking in anime that doesn't reflect actual Japanese people in real life. So, let me get this straight. It is digital yellow face to have a VTuber model with a Japanese name. Let me, let me get this straight. Like, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. You think that people adopt a VTuber model and a Japanese name to go with it to impersonate, to role play, or give the impression that they are a Japanese woman? Is, is that what you think VTubing is? No, they are role playing as an anime character. Do you, do you not understand what VTubing is? When these people have a VTuber model, an anime girl persona, with a Japanese name, they are role-playing as an anime character, not as a Japanese woman. Am I... If I adopted a Japanese name right now, would I be role-playing as a Japanese woman? Is that the impression I'd be giving? No. No one would think that, and no one is trying to do that. It's a very strange thing to immediately associate anime characters with Japanese people. That's really strange, really strange. And like, you're trying to dunk on the, the, the weeaboos and the, the digital yellow face people. Like, I'm sorry, that is very strange. A very strange connection that nobody but right here are people trying to make. But here's another thread, a little bit of a long one. We're just gonna kind of pick at it here because now we've reached day three of their meltdown. This was actually yesterday, and they're getting mad because people are making fun of them and criticizing their former posts about anime and VTubing. So they say, 
The angry weebs in my replies who can't handle the fact that most Japanese people aren't super into anime remind me of the same weebs who try to move to Japan and end up leaving after only two or three months. They figure out average Japanese people aren't as otaku as they are and go back to where they were. And some of the weebs actually end up going back to their home countries and find that they enjoy anime subculture things with other weebs way more than they ever did with Japan and Japanese people. This is one of those moments where I will just say, I don't think that happened. I, I think you're exaggerating. Do you really think, are you trying to tell us there is a wave of these weeaboo people coming to Japan, having the resources to come to Japan, get citizenship, live there for two or three months, and then go, dang, these Japanese otakus aren't really up to my speed, and then they leave back and say, and report back to you apparently, and say that uh, they actually like being around other weebs outside of Japan. Is it, are, are we supposed to believe that's a real story? Like, really? And, you know, I don't bring this up too often, but I'm no expert on Japan, right? But one thing I do know is that over 98% of the Japanese population is native-born Japanese, okay? It is extremely hard to get citizenship in Japan as someone who is outside the country, okay? It's extremely hard. Do you believe these people are actually getting citizenship and living in Japan for an extended period of time when they're these supposedly greasy, disgusting weeaboos with no jobs and no income and no resources? Is this a reality we're supposed to believe is true? Yeah, I, I don't really think it is. But making up crazy narratives is actually something that uh, this person has been known for. A lot of people began pointing out that... Uh, this person reminded them of the kimono person. Now, who's the kimono person? Well, exactly a year ago, last March in 2022, the same user with a different name that they have since changed made a very controversial thread on Twitter saying, I am once again asking artists to stop drawing kimono with the curve of boobs. We pad our bodies in kimono to avoid this. It should be as flat chested as possible. And they go on to basically say, I know what I'm talking about because I am a professional kimono stylist. I know better than anyone from outside Japan. And as you'll see when they go on, in Japan as well. But they use this artwork to prove their points. Now, that is a little bit of a problem because the actual Japanese artist who made that design came in and said, I don't approve of you using my artwork and... This is not my opinion, and I don't agree with you. Please take down my tweet, which, of course, they would. But, luckily or unluckily for them, people archived all this stuff. Like, any of these big threads will be archived forever. And once you scroll down far enough, like, all the posts are still there that we just looked at. But they have a bit of a breakdown talking about Japanese artists. And they go on basically saying that nobody knows what they're talking about and that... 90% of Japanese people can't even put on a kimono by themselves. And I just know better because I'm a professional kimono des artist or whatever they are. And it just reeks of I know better than you. I'm entitled to an opinion that speaks on behalf of not only everyone who's not Japanese, but Japanese as well, despite the fact that they were raised in America. This sounds like something, what, would, what kind of a person would do that? Would, would speak on behalf of Japan when they weren't born there. What, what kind of a person does that sound like? A weeaboo. The irony, but there's more threads, but uh, I think you get the point with this one. But one last thing I wanted to point out for this video is there is a lot of entitlements on Twitter when it comes to anyone who is Japanese or a part of Japanese culture. So here we have Masahiro Aito, who is the lead art designer for the Silent Hill franchise, which is widely praised for its artwork. And he is a very respected member of the horror community in Japan and worldwide. And he made a thread, it is now deleted. It, it went viral, it had over 100,000 likes, and it was using clips of Matt Walsh talking about transgender-related issues. Think about whatever you want 
in terms of Matt Walsh. Okay, he's he's a creep. He has awful takes, in my opinion. But the conversation was using him as a jumping off point. What he said, and then they made their own conclusions based on the general topic, right? And there is a thread. The, the original thread is in Japanese, of course. And this do-gooders, this set of do-gooders from Twitter are basically saying, can you explain why you think Matt Walsh is okay? And can you explain your views on transgender issues and all these things? And eventually it comes down to, well, I can't get my uh, Google Translate to work. So can you explain to me what where your stance is in English? And Ito says, well, can you study Japanese? If you're going to enter my Japanese thread involving a conversation centering around Japanese Twitter, and if you're going to make demands that I explain things to you, why don't you study Japanese and understand I don't have to do anything special to cater to you. Who are you? And this user replies with this heavily memed on response saying, can you just please explain in English your stance on trans people? No, no. Ito does not have to explain you anything. They don't owe you anything. They don't owe you a response in general. And they especially don't owe you a response in your language. Think about the entitlement of that. Going into threads with a language you don't speak and demanding that they speak back to you and explain themselves in your language. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad to me. I, I don't know about you guys. That sounds pretty entitled and disrespectful. And I don't care what was going on in that upper thread. They don't owe you a discussion and explanation in your language. It's crazy to me. But I think this video has really demonstrated how easy it is to not only get likes and attention for attacking Japan, its culture, and people inter uh, interested in it, but it also just shows the level of entitlement and how comfortable people are disrespecting all these things and acting like they're an authority on things that they have no right to more than basically anyone else. It was a crazy uh, thread we, were, we all looked at here, but please share all of your thoughts about everything we talked about today in the comment section down below. I know it was a lot, but uh, I appreciate the listen, and I hope you enjoyed the video, everyone, and I'll see you guys next time.